my uh okay so i'm gonna call the meeting to order at um 704 okay we'll have a roll call uh brian allen here ralph croy here scott mcgarchian not here but he said he's coming and Sid Gold here, we have a quorum of the meeting. I'm trying to, let's see. I tried to share my screen. Brian, do you have a copy of my the agenda? I do. This? If I allow you to share your screen, can you put my computer's acting up here to share my screen with the agenda? So I'm going to make you uh, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, Brian, do you have a copy of my So you should be allowed. Can you share the screen? Do you have that option now or not? Mm, I got to find it first. Okay, let me try this. No, I, I can do it. Hold on. I just got to go find the file. Well, I found the file here, so it's okay. Uh, sure, I just got it. Okay, okay. put yours up. Go ahead. No, you put yours up. That's better. Okay, now I can see this. Well, I see the title, but I don't see the actual... Uh, Agenda. Yeah, I gotta move it down here. Okay. Oops. That's not okay. the one. I got it here. Okay, it's all right. We're getting here a little more. I'm trying my best here. It's coming. It's a long agenda. Okay, we have two people from the public here, Maddie and uh, Barbara. Maddie, and meet yourself if you want to make a comment. Will do, thank you. No comment? Not at the moment, thank you. Okay. And Barbara? Hello. Any comment? Not yet. Okay. So the first thing on the agenda is a discussion of possible action regarding management of volunteers at the city and animal shelters. And uh, the reason this I brought this forward is that some of the volunteers at the animal shelters apparently were talking to the media about the conditions at the various animal shelters in Los Angeles and a number of uh, the volunteers were asked to leave their position. And uh, my understanding that's up in the air right now from the, the bank meeting, do you remember the exact comment that uh, was made there? But I think some have been rehired or not rehired, but allowed to volunteer. So um, I wanna put that on hold so we get further information about that. Okay, so let's move on to number five. Discussion of possible action regarding council file. It should be 22-1146 uh, concerning Dunn and council file system. Um, so I don't know if anyone has looked at the open the link, but basically there's a, a resolution the, for 45 days to investigate uh, why a lot of the council CIS coming from neighborhood councils never got to where they were supposed to go. Apparently uh, there were wrong addresses uh, for the CISs that they were there. None of them were updated. Like the ethics, uh, board of ethics uh, email address was out of date. So a, a number of CISs were sent to the, uh, 
to the board commission and they never got there. And uh, so there's been a number of CISs that have been sort of out there in limbo. They never got directed to the right place. And so the, that was brought to the city council's attention and they've asked for a, um, a review and report back in 45 days about what's going on. So any comments about that? Well, 45 days seems to be a long time. Uh, first of all, uh, Scott's in attendees. Okay. Said, and while you're doing that, the, the issue as I see it on this, it's kind of stupid because it's just a matter of um, procedure be, being lost in the shuffle. Uh, they just didn't follow through and they didn't think about it. So they just weren't doing what they should have been doing because, because there's lack of attention to it. That, that's my take on it. Uh, what The only action I think we should take is to uh, basically, basically issue a letter chastising them for failing to do the job of maintaining the system and require that they are open to questions when people don't see their posting. So, so that there is a chance that those who are posting CISs can go in and ask, why isn't it there? And they review to make sure that they aren't screwing up again. But it's really just a procedural issue and I don't know whose procedure it is, but somebody isn't keeping track of, of changes in personnel when they change. And so the emails are not updated. And that's that's as simple as it gets. So my concern is... Uh, Hi, Brian. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yes. Hear. Okay. My video is not on, Sid, and that's... That's okay. Okay, okay. We'll, that's we'll fine. We'll forgive you. No, I mean, it's on your side. Oh, my I, side? Yeah, I can't turn it on from my side. It's not allowing me. Okay, let me see. I don't mind showing my face. I'm not scared. <laughs> you guys might get scared, but I'm not. I don't think that's going to happen. All right. I don't know. How do I turn you on? Permission, permission to talk. Hi, my video. Remove. No. I'm trying to figure out how to make... I don't see a signal here. Do Brian, how did you get your picture on? I came in through a panelist, and so it was automatic. Let me, up, let me upgrade. Let's see if I can upgrade you. Anyways, I think it doesn't go far enough. Uh, I believe that the um, the department has not been really attentive over the time that I've been involved here to the. Um, uh, request from the neighborhood council. I think it's a more of a systemic issue rather than looking at this one thing. It only came to light, not because of the Dunn being aware of it, but one of the uh, members of the Reseda board being aware. Uh, yeah, Jamie. Uh, uh, aware of the, that her CIS never got sent and by, and then other people have looked into it. I would see, like to see a little more done in investigating and looking at the management of um, done. And what I was thinking is to uh, maybe consider a request to the uh, mayor to ask the, uh, the city administrative officer to lodge an investigation to the management of, of the Department of Neighbor and Empowerment. Sid, I don't, well, wait a minute, you got two hands up, so. Okay. Those first I'm gonna time. Okay. All right, so Ralph was first, you can yeah, go ahead, so Ralph. What bothers me is that they were going to take 45 days to get, solve a problem. And what, are, what about the things that are time sensitive? Well, what are, you know, I think that's a good point. What would you like to recommend? Would you like to... Uh, add to the uh, CIS to the council file that you would like um, to ensure that time sensitive things are handled in this time period or something like that? Yes, I would like to do that because, you know, sometimes things are time sensitive, 
and we sort of we sort of missed the mark. Make no comment. Your, uh, it'll be so, uh, so your resolution would be, let's say, the nature to uh, have uh, this group from the city council attend urgently those uh, matters that are time sensitive. Yes. Okay. I'd like to say, and by the way, I don't see my picture so showing up here. Am I? I know. I. You came in in the wrong way. You came in as an attendee. I'm trying to promote you, and it's not letting me do it. Um, well, I used the norm, the nomenclature that we're supposed to on that by uh, yeah. system. Okay. Ralph, did you get a email from Oscar uh, to bring you in as a panelist? I thought I did. I got a. See, that should have put you in directly into the meeting. So I'm trying to upgrade you. I'm just trying to see how I can promote you. Okay. So you got so Scott, much to go over, Sid, that I wouldn't worry about video on this one because it will take forever trying to figure okay. it out. Okay. Let's move. So we have a, uh, a resolution uh, to add a CIS to this uh, council file to ask the uh, panel to move urgently on, on those matters that are outstanding and are time sensitive. Yes. Let me, let me share a point that I think I know, but I can't say for sure. Uh, I don't believe that Dunn is in charge of maintaining the email lists for these items. That is a personnel function, if I'm not mistaken, because it, it generate, it's generated through the change in personnel. Uh, uh, actual people, when people move around from department to department, that's not Dunn's responsibility. Dunn is being um, stated as being responsible for this because they responded to the accusation, but it, but I do not believe that this is Dunn's issue. I will be talking with, with Raquel in the next day or two, and I will ask her about that. Uh, but I, I really don't think it's it's her that is doing this. I believe it is personnel and ITA. Okay. Well, that'll be part of the investigation. But I think yes. in the meantime, um, I think Ralph's point is uh, important. Hi, Scott. It figures you out. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. Well, we got his picture. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get you too. It doesn't like you, Ralph. I can't Don't worry, do Ralph. We're picking on you. I can't. Do, I'll try a little later. Okay. Scott, did you hear the discussion? Any comments on that? It was like in and out while okay, this. Okay. The president. Right now, we're discussing whether we were want to send the CIS that the group investigating the uh, system at uh, done move urgently on any out, uh, any outstanding and urgent matters that are have not been addressed. I agree. I mean, definitely it needs to be moved urgently. Okay. All right. And he went from the, uh, our visitors have anything to say in this regard? No. No, okay. So we have that motion in front of us. Uh, we'll have a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 And Ralph, you're saying aye? Ralph's muted. Unmute, Ralph. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, I didn't know. I thought okay. I was showed up as mute. Okay, we have a new guest, uh, Guido. Can you uh, unmute yourself and uh, make a comment? Introduce yourself. Guido, do you hear me? I'll lower my hand, okay. Okay, Guido's not responding. Okay, so I wanna get back to my point and uh, 
Brian made a point that he thinks it may be not just the department, but I think it's an opportunity for my recommendation would be to ask the mayor to ask the city administrative officer to look at the functioning of the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and how it provides services to the neighborhood councils. I'll vote for that. Which are you on right now? We're still on that. Uh, five. Five. Let me go back to my share screen. Okay, there I'm sharing my screen again. I figured out as long as I'm in share screen, I can't unmute anybody. So that takes away all my options. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, I you got my picture again. Yep. I guess I can do it. It's good. We're going to let you. Okay. So what, any thoughts about that? I would make that as a resolution. So uh, we had the CIS to this to ask the mayor to ask the city administrative officer to evaluate the performance of done in regard to providing services to the various neighborhood councils in the city. Any comments from anyone? I'm not sure why you want to do that at this stage. Okay, we can speak against it. No one seconded it. So I'll second it. <laughs> okay, now, now you can talk about it, Brian. Go ahead. Okay, I, I just don't understand the desire to address that in, in such a strong way. I mean, Dunn has its problems, and I agree with that. Uh, but asking for an evaluation of the way Dunn functions is pretty strong. And I'm not sure that it's necessary, nor do I think, nor do I think it's called for. Uh, there's lots of people that are questioning what Dunn is doing. I understand that, but we've had that with every general manager. People don't like Dunn because they see Dunn as a police force. But that's but their their job is to is to maintain a control of the process, not the not the NCs. And unfortunately, me members of the NCs think that when they question the process, the protocol that's used, that they're questioning the NCs ability to function. And I don't agree with that. So I, I think it's pretty harsh to go after done unless we have some specific examples of what they've done wrong. If, if we can come up with something that they've done wrong, rather than just a perception, then I would I would be in favor, but unless we have some examples of something that we believe they've done wrong, I think that's just pretty aggressive, and I'm not sure that it's called for. From my, so you're from speaking my... against it. Any other comments? Well, I have a comment. Are we talking about the fact that some of the information we were supposed to get and forward never got there? I think that's an important meeting requirement. You know. Yeah, but I, as Brian was pointing out, he thought it might be a technical issue rather than necessarily the department. But, uh, go on. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ralph. Go on. It didn't happen. That's what I'm. Yeah. No. I... Well, I think I don't have any individual evidence, but we have the survey that uh, Lank uh, did, the uh, Los Angeles Neighborhood uh, Council Coalition, that showed a lot of unhappiness from. I think there were 350 returns, and there was a lot of uh, comments about uh, being unhappy about how uh, uh, Dunn was providing service to the neighborhood councils. So I don't have exact examples, but uh, that uh, survey, which was sent out this week, uh, showed a, a whole bunch of areas where, uh, at least by opinions by members of neighborhood councils, expressed an un unhappiness in what's going on. It so, Sid, that, that survey was, first of all, the questions were skewed to get those answers, and the, it was so lopsided that you would have to, you'd have to make the judgment that they're doing nothing right, and that's just over the top. It's ridiculous. I think that survey was very poorly written, and it led people to those answers. 
and and I just, you know, if if we're going to pick on a department uh, just because we think they aren't doing something right, I think that's a very big mistake. Well, how do we get an answer to what we wanted? I think we have to have very specific examples. We have to say, what was it yeah. that caused you to believe this? What action that was taken caused you to feel that way? Not just, I feel that way. No, one is right. I mean, we need to have facts and present it. Okay. We'll you know, we should facts. have the facts. I mean, we don't want to approach with hearsay. Okay. Now, the, it's not hearsay, but. I had, there are facts no, in the survey. People made written comments, but I'm not prepared to present them right now. So I, I, I suggest we table my idea till the next meeting. So I bring more facts uh, forward. Okay. Is that all right? Can you disclose the facts? I mean, at a later date? No, at the next meeting, I'll get that. There are facts. Okay. There, there, are, there are written comments in the survey. Perfect. About, about, but I don't have them at my fingertips. I don't have the survey at my fingertips. So I accept the comment that we need more information and I'll provide that at the next meeting. Is that okay? I, I, I go with that. Look, I'm not afraid to criticize Dunn personally, okay. uh, but I'm also not going to go off on a tangent. No, I understand. I'll bring the facts and we'll have a, a different uh, look at the, um, my recommendation. Okay. It's a fair ask. Are we talking about the fact that we couldn't get somebody through? We're talking about just the general unhappiness about the performance. I don't think ever there's been an evaluation that I'm aware of how it done has uh, performed since I've been here, but that's another issue. Okay. And um, anyway, let's move on. We're, let's, Number six, discussion and possible action regarding alleged racism by LA City Council members. <laughs> okay. no. And as you know, it's been in the news and uh, uh, somehow uh, someone was recording a secret conversation between uh, three councilmen and the chair of the Los Angeles uh, unions. And uh, so I'm I don't have a copy of the tape here or whatever, but the, it's common knowledge that there were some comments about various races, religions, uh, talking about power, getting certain power for certain districts for the, each of the councilmen, everything like that. And uh, so there's a couple of issues here, Sid, and the I I'll make a motion so we can discuss this that we send a letter uh, of. Um, <laughs> we send a letter to, and I'm trying to get some words that would make sense here, uh, to support the position of ensuring that city council abides by all published rules and regulations, including code of civility, code of conduct, uh, and uh, and have that reviewed. The, the the issue, and if anybody wants to second that they may we'll second that okay I mean, so, Brian, go on so let me let me say this the action that was taken was a, a essentially a backroom action in other words it was after a meeting the information that was bandied around in that is information and comments that you might find if you uh, you know if you had a close friend and you talked to the close friend and this was not in public, all right? And I don't condone that, but it's the kind of conversation as I understand it. Now, the issues I have is this, they should never do that in a, in a, in a, in a forum in which anybody else can talk to them. They shouldn't do it at all, but in a forum where anybody else can hear it, they should never ever uh, contemplate that or discuss issues like that because they are way outside the bounds of normal or decent behavior. The, the fact is they were scheming against the city to achieve power for themselves. Again, a problem. So, so that's bad enough. But you also have to consider that this should have been brought out as soon as that person who had that tape 
recognize what's going on. They shouldn't have waited a year to bring this out. This should have been brought out immediately. So I have a problem with the whistleblower on this because the whistleblower obviously has an agenda of their self. So there's a there's a couple of very serious con considerations. So let's, get to, let's get back to what you want to recommend. This is essentially the same thing as what you're talking about with Dunn. But in this case, you have a, an example of something that happened and you have a, a, a very good opportunity here to draw a conclusion that they should do a full investigation of city council as a whole and comments and actions that they take both on and in and out of the job. I think that's going on already. Yeah, but we need, we, my point is we need to support that. I support it. Okay, but I'm just saying we, we issue a CIS in support of that. Can I, I'll make a comment. I can't raise my hand, sir. It's, uh, anyway, my feeling, uh, what I was thinking is that we'd ask the mayor and city council to ask the U.S. attorney to open a grand jury to investigate the uh, behavior of uh, the various offices at LA City. You know, we have one councilman who's been suspended, another uh, sent to jail, another one who's uh, been stripped of all his uh, power. I think there's, a, besides, now we have this open uh, corruptive practice, whether it was time for now or later, it's still obvious, but I think it involved really to me involves a real a federal investigation. I think we should be asking the U.S. attorney to set up a grand jury to investigate it. I'll, than, I'll withdraw my motion and you can make that motion and I'll second it. Okay, so I'm making that motion that we ask uh, the mayor and the city council ask the U.S. city uh, U.S. attorney for Los Angeles to start a grand jury to investigate the behavior of L.A. city council. I'll take that. I agree. I think that's a good option. Okay. So, any comments from the participants in the background there? No. No. Okay. All right. So, any other discussion about that? I'll vote on a matter. Okay, I'll call for a vote here. All in favor of the CIS to recommend that. Um, I don't have the exact, there is a council file on that. I don't have the number here. Uh, to recommend that this, the mayor and the city council ask for, ask the U.S. attorney for Los Angeles to open a, a grand jury to investigate the behavior of LA City Council. I think you mean the mayor and the city attorney. The mayor and the city attorney. Okay, thank you for correcting me. The mayor and the city attorney. Let's vote oh. on it. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. That passes unanimously. Let's move on. Let's see where we are now. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to, I need more information on this. That, uh, Number seven? Number seven. So I was expecting to get a, some information from L, uh, DWB, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I want to put that off for the next meeting. You're tabling it. Tabling it, correct. Okay. Next question it has to do with LASA, Los Angeles Housing Authority. And uh, again, when I was at the um, Congress, I went to the uh, LASA table. I was the only one visiting there. So I got to hear uh, more information about what's going on. And um, basically the number of homeless is 85,000 in the city of Los Angeles or the county of city Los Angeles. County. 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 And that, 
even though they're housing people, they house, uh, he said 10,000 people last year, I believe is the number, I don't have them in front of me, that number is staying flat. It's like our inflation now was at 18.2% and it's staying there, even though uh, other things are happening. Uh, so the number of actual homeless, even with the housing, is not, there's not been any budge in it, basically. The, the overall number has stayed the same, even though, so there's more people becoming homeless and there's people being taken off the street, but it's, it doesn't, there's not a number where more people are taken off the street. And, um, and the question has to be, why is that? Why is that uh, going on? Is there not enough housing being built? Are they not looking at uh, um, the nature of it more? You know, the, the bureaucracy and the homeless of the city of Los Angeles has expanded like a, a hundred times since uh, 19, uh, since 2005. So there's a lot of people there. A lot of money has been put into uh, H and HHH. And uh, if you look on, I believe on Roscoe in North Hollywood, there's a whole bunch of houses been built there, They're like little bungalows. Uh, each of them cost $400,000, each of them, I forget the number there. So there's this, I think, uh, I don't know what we can do, but- uh, There's I no think, way, there's no way a tiny home costs $400,000. I tell you that's- uh, I understand that's what they're spending, but there's no way that it actually costs that. Um, I would challenge anybody on that. I've seen these tiny homes. I know the ones you're talking about right there on uh, Laurel Canyon, I think it is. And it's it's a crying shame. And the, the fact is the numbers of homeless in the city of Los Angeles have gone up. They haven't stayed, stayed flat. They have gone up. It's now 44,000. And it, was, it hadn't been 40,000 prior to this. And we have, we have laws that are not being enforced, which are contributing to this. And we are not finding any solution to the problem because you can't just find a home for these people. You have to find a way for them to pay to be in those homes. And that means finding them jobs and getting them uh, back into the workforce and none of that is being done i've been yelling about this for eight nine years that there is no plan we've thrown billions of dollars at this and there is no plan there's just actions that they try to take and th this is this is probably the worst government exposure i've ever seen uh you know there is nothing good happening here absolutely nothing and I made a comment. This gets back to our basic thing. Our school system stinks. Uh, we no longer teach people how to get a job. Yeah, let's, Ralph, let's try to stick to this topic right now on the last okay. Problem is, we were talking about they can't get a job. Well, that's our city's problem. Our structure isn't correct. So what, what we... What, uh, as an advisory body, as a neighbor council, what can we recommend to improve what's going on? There's lots of money, lots of people working, but there's still more people out on the streets. And um, there's no account, there's no accounting over the last four or five years of the money spent. Nobody's been able to tell us exactly where the money is spent, how it's spent, how much money is left. I think if we're going to do anything at all, we need somebody to come clean and tell us exactly what has happened. Where has money been spent? How much has been spent? How much is still existing? And what is their plan to go forward? We don't even know their plan. Yeah, so, so the problem here is loss is a, a joint venture between the county and the city. Okay. And I don't know who's in charge of it. I haven't been able to figure out who's in charge. Um, but the point, Brian, I think, who's going to go do this accounting? Is it the LA City Controller? Is it uh, somebody at the county level? Who does I this? think the city needs to hire an outside consulting firm to do this. The uh -oh. city and the county cannot do it on their own. They are compromised. So are you suggesting there's something more than incompetence going on here? 
<laughs> Absolutely, I am. Okay, I just clarify. So maybe in that case, uh, to uh, to ask the district attorney or the sheriff who has a uh, public accountability office to investigate. You know, he's investigated the contracts from some of the county supervisors, uh, giving up. And you know, we <laughs> Sid. One of the problems here is that I don't have any faith whatsoever in the district attorney. I do not believe that I have any any hope for the the city attorney because he's he's on his way out. Uh, so it has to be an outside entity outside the city, outside the county. Well, on the other hand, if we feel there's some sort of corruption here too, can we ask uh, again? The uh, U.S. Uh, attorney. I wouldn't be afraid to do that. I so, think it, I think this is a, you know, there's people that are hurt here, people that are dying here. And we have no understanding of how that's happening. And we have no understanding of, of how to resolve it. So let me try to help you. So would we ask again the U.S. So we're, I'm trying to figure out how we can contact him. Okay. We're not allowed to contact him directly. Okay. No, we'd have to have the city council. Uh, so we could ask uh, question uh, our council outside John investigation, Lee, John Lee, to introduce a council file to establish a a uh, recommendation to the uh, Los Angeles uh, attorney for federal government to initiate a investigation of the practices of LASA. An independent outside investigation, yes. So would, would you consider, say, the, if we ask a federal attorney, that wouldn't cost money. If we ask, uh, and that's a consultant that can run, it cost a lot of money to do that. So it's right. gonna cost. There's no question it's gonna cost money. Yeah. So I think I would like to see the first step to see if the US attorney would step forward. If not, then I would be open to considering getting a consultant at that point. You don't want okay. to get So make a motion. So I move that uh, we ask uh, Councilman John Lee to open a council file regarding LASA and to ask for an investigation from the U.S. Attorney, US attorney regarding the management of, of funds by LASA. Right. Any comments? I second that. Okay, second. Discussion? Oh. Scott? As well. Ralph? Yes. <laughs> You're in favor of that? Yes. Okay, okay so that's uh, but that passes unanimously again. Okay, let me get my glasses on, Let's see where we're at here. Okay, next one is discussion of possible action regarding council file 22-002-S122, ballot measure regarding reproductive rights. Um, the city council has taken a stand and voted in favor of supporting proposition one, which is the, the motion to have uh, reproductive rights, uh, part of the uh, city, uh, the, uh, California Charter, uh, right, Constitution. And um, so we can comment on the council files uh, recommendation, okay, that they were supporting this Proposition 1. And uh, anybody have any thoughts about Proposition Well, without reading it, it's very hard to, uh, to make a decision. Uh, I've heard things about it and I don't know whether, I don't know the facts. So it's very hard to discuss well, it's it. It's on the ballot, I'll, go, I'll get my ballot, I'll read it to you. Hold on one sec. Florence, my wife is gonna bring the ballot, give me a minute. So basically it says that there will be no, no restriction on reproductive rights, okay. As you know, right now, the California law is that a, a termination of pregnancy is Okay, up to 24 weeks. After that, when they, it's considered the uh, fetus is viable, then there's no uh, legal, except for um, 
danger to the mother. Okay, that's the California law right now. The proposition has, has no restrictions on time limits or anything like that. So a child can yeah. be 30 weeks old or 35, six right. weeks old? There's no, they nothing terminated? There. There's they nothing can... in there that provides, they say that uh, it's not gonna happen. The argument is that it's not gonna happen. Let me find that. Well, the, the argument against that is if it, if the argument is it's not going to happen, then, then why be afraid to allow for? Uh, well, that's uh, the point you asked. This was put on the ballot by the state legislature. Okay. Yeah. They had a, a, a quick vote before they adjourned, and this was passed by the state legislature. And yeah. our city council acted quickly to endorse it. Um, I think 24 months, in my opinion, is still too long. 24 hey. weeks. Uh, you know, I, I think somebody within 12 to 15 weeks should make a decision to whether. I, I, that's the state, that's a law right now in California. Uh, I'm looking for. It's the one thing about this ballot uh, is there's a lot of stuff. A lot on the you ballot. know, this is, this is an area that's very difficult because. On one side of the coin, and by the way, we're all males here, so we're going to get challenged on this regardless of what we do. But the the fact is, it's the world has nearly eight billion people in it. the The question that's that's out there is how many people can this planet actually support? And so, people are taking that argument and saying it's okay if we don't have any more people. Okay, and, let me interrupt for one sec, okay? Yeah. I'll read the measure, okay? Amendment California Constitution to expressly include an individual fundamental right to reproductive freedom, which includes the fundamental right to choose to have an abortion and the fundamental right to choose or refuse contraception. This amendment does not narrow or limit the existing rights to privacy and equal protection under the California Constitution. Okay, that's the, so well, there's, nothing, there's nothing in there about times or whatever, uh, that just unlimited. Yeah, it just opens it up. It's, the problem uh, you have is crazy. we are only looking at the female and saying the female has the right at all, at all points. But there's much more that goes into that. Uh, a, a female cannot have a pregnancy on their own. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with morality here. We're dealing with individual rights of, of both parties, both the male and the female. And that is such a difficult environment to, to try to sort out and give rights to. It, it's, it's ridiculous. So what, what has happened in the past is where they have fallen on religious and moral uh, conditions. And un unfortunately, not everybody agrees. As a matter of fact, it's impossible to get a majority of agreement on any of this. You're going to have, this is going to be right down the middle, 50-50. Some people are going to say there needs to be uh, complete freedom, and others are going to say absolutely not. There is a moral component to this, a religious component to this, and this, this is going to be a 50-50 argument. So weighing in on, in on this at all at this stage I don't think it's fruitful for any of us. I think this is one of those situations that you're just going to have to let the the people in power make their decisions. I don't know. The city council didn't have any uh, scruple to weigh in on it. They, absolutely, uh, they don't. And, and can yeah. you criticize them for that? Absolutely, I would. Uh, I don't think that I don't think that we have the right to weigh in on this. To be honest with you. Uh, I think okay. the state does. The state has to make a decision. And unfortunately, they may make the decision that I don't like. I don't know. But we, at, the at this level, we don't have the power nor the right, in my opinion, to do this. This is, this is something that never should have been in the federal courts to begin with. It should have always been at the state level. It is the state's right to regulate. And if people don't like what the state does, they have the right to move to another state. So... I, I think we're out of our, our element here. Okay, comment. I agree with you, Brian. I'm on the same page. I agree. We, okay. we have the 10th Amendment. And that's why it was kicked out. The 10th Amendment 
So any laws um, not in the Constitution are up to the state. And it would, to, you know, to make a federal thing again, uh, that they're trying to do on a federal level again is- so It looks like we're not gonna get a vote on this, okay. I disagree with both of you, okay. I think uh, the California law in existence is fine. And uh, they deliberately overrode that uh, law, and uh, which is going to lead to a lot of discord in the, in the in the state. Had they kept the law as it was, it would not be much of a problem. But they decided to override it. But we're not going to take an action because we're not going to have a majority one way or the other. It's going to be two to two. So, uh, I reckon look, if you want to, if you want to propose a motion. We can vote on it and see what happens. I have no problem personally making sure that it moves to the board to make a decision. If if you're that uh, that concerned about it, uh, I don't think I don't think I want to be in a position of saying um, my way or the highway. So um, you know, I, I think it deserves at least discussion at the board level. Well, as I said, uh, I would put a CIS in stating that we oppose the, uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get to uh, vote anyways, because. You don't uh, know unless you try. No, I'm just saying the election is on November the 8th. And uh, uh, I guess we could have a board meeting before that. Okay. Uh, we'll be a little late, but anyway. So what I would recommend is that we submit a CIS opposing the council's action and support and recommend that the city, the, uh, the state of California maintain its present status regarding abortion rights. That's I'll second that. Okay, it's seconded. Okay, for discussion, Scott. I agree. I'll, I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it, I, I mean, the new, what they want to do is worse. Uh, so well, in your view, a lot of people, uh, you, Brian was at the uh, bank meeting. He right. heard some, Susan Shelley was talking about it. And he heard some comments from some of the people there who uh, sort of use that a hominem arguments towards her. So, uh, okay. So Ralph, you have your hand up? Well, my comment is, you know, what we have in the Constitution presently uh, should stay until we do a lot more studies on this. Okay, so that would be my. Uh, it's all emotional right now. So, so my motion is to submit a CIS opposing the council's position regarding Proposition One, and make a recommendation that the uh, state return to its previous abortion legislation. Okay, can we have a vote? All in favor, can I hear aye? What are, we, what are we voting on now? On sending a CIS on this uh, council file saying that we oppose this council's action supporting Proposition 1 and recommend that the state return to its previous law regarding abortions. Okay, I would second that, yes. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay, so that's... Okay, thank you. That's passed. I don't know if we'll ever get the vote on it, but at least we discussed it. Okay. Okay, let me move down the screen here a little bit. Okay. Eight. And then we're on number 10. Ten. 10. Discussion of possible action regarding the transit corridor housing. And I don't know if you looked up the uh, the council file, but basically it's, uh, allowing a lot of construction on, on things that are called transit corridors. Okay. And, uh, it's a long motion. Okay. And I'll read a couple of the, uh, Okay, so this is what they're asking for. Waivers on, or reduction of setbacks, unit floor area, and other development standards. 
an inclusionary housing requirement to increase access to affordable housing, a minimum density requirement to promote multifamily mixed use development, provisions to encourage greater lot density, such as allowing for micro units, shared housing, or increasing floor area ratio, the elimination of reduction of parking minimum in a highly quality transit area or transit rich zone, exclusions or mitigations for lots located within a very high fire hazard area, as identified historic district or areas designated as open space, and exclusions for projects that may result in the demolition of buildings subject to the rent stabilization ordinance. Okay, so now that's the, the, only the first and there's a whole bunch of other actions um, to report back in 108. But basically what they want to do is to remove most of the zoning rules around what they call high transit area to m make it into multifamily high density uh, units. Without, without any regard to parking or anything like that. Okay. This is another one of the state and city county issues in which they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. There is no plan to provide infrastructure for this. There is no way that the people of the city will buy it in total. And we've lost 300,000 people last year uh, who have left the state and issues like this will will allow other people to decide to move out. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to in the last just four months who are saying, if I can, I'm moving, I'm getting out of California. And this is the kind of thing that pushes people that way. So when that happens, they won't need this. They won't need to do this at all. There'll be plenty of housing. So you're speaking against it. Absolutely, I'm speaking against it. it. Is the, it is the most ridiculous position I've ever heard of. There is, you know, so I don't Kirby, understand how Kirby how they believe that they can move anybody and everybody into a area and provide for them and and have them happy. This is this is social. Uh, 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 what's the, what's it called? The uh, engineering. Social engineering, at its absolute worst. May I make some comments here? Please make a comment. Anytime the city wants to make a change, all they have to do is reroute the bus and then that becomes a transit and they can change all the laws. And it's an out of control, an out of control law the way it's written because- So are you- Transit people- against anything you want to put in the CIS aside from going on the Hills North Neighborhood Council of Posts? Uh, this uh, uh, not allowed to say what I would like to put in that CIS. <laughs> I know I put that in there. That this is the most uh, whatever. Okay, but any besides saying we we're just opposing it. Any other uh, comments that you want to make? Well, what we what happens is we lose control because all they have to do is say we'll have another transit corridor, and now we can change everything else. So we have no control once they get that gimmick. No. I think we have to look at it. Why would a politician put this forward? Okay. <laughs> Why would any, any politician uh, put this forward? For the $200,000 salary they get every year? No. Plus so who's pushing this concept? Who's... Who, Who's building all these units? Uh, see, that to me is the issue. Um, see, I don't think the city council should be allowed to vote on anything that they've gotten money from, okay, that, uh, or any builder or anything like that. that uh, yeah, as we attack that this, issue. Uh, this is really want to follow the money, just like H and HHHAs, they're all follow the money issues. That uh, So, these are all maddening things. That, it, I mean, it's very hard to discuss them calmly because it there's no logic, and the morality of this is beyond me. Yeah. You, you, they're putting people into environments that they cannot survive in. They want to get rid of electricity, uh, of gas, so 
they want to change people's habits entirely and force them to spend money so that they think that they're going to affect the climate. Well, that's for the greater good. The greater <laughs> good. Here you, you get me 90% of the uh, scientists all saying it's greater, greater good and I'll buy it, but they don't. So we're going to oppose this. Any sort of wording that we have to oppose this uh, amendment? I mean, this uh, council file. I can't think of anything I can say. That... That's polite. Any other words? No, I think this is part of the environmental plan. Okay. They don't want you living in Granada Hills. Okay. They, they don't want you too far away from the city. They want you in a place where you can't have a car. In New, York, right. no, in New York, no one has a car. A very few, only the very rich have cars. Nobody can afford a parking spot in New York. So, but I wouldn't put that in the resolution either. I mean, in the uh, CIS, but that's my personal political belief that this is pushed by the environmental movement and the builders who back the environmental movement. It's, uh, so can we have a resolution just that we oppose this, uh, this council file? Can we leave it at that? Do we yeah. oppose the council file? Yeah, that's sufficient. We don't have to give a reason. Okay. Strongly oppose the council okay, file. Okay, strongly oppose, okay. Due, due to the fact that it is unplanned social engineering. I think it's very planned personally, okay. I think I, there's, I don't see. I it. think I think there's a method to the madness here. I think there's a desire. I don't think there's a plan because there's uh, we, look. We don't have enough water, so I don't. I don't know how you're going to provide for all these facilities. You don't have enough sewage. You don't have enough water. You don't have enough electricity. Other I didn't drink uh, purple pipe. That'll be uh, what does yeah that work? right. Is that what, <laughs> Is that what Marie Antoinette said? You have to have your own your own pills that you drop in the water before you drink it. Anyway, okay, so the uh, motion is to have a CAS strongly opposing council file with whatever the number is here. Yes. yes. Okay. Agreed. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, discussion and possible action regarding the rental eviction code. Um, basically, people want to extend the, the, the policy of uh, not having it, that they we're still in a state of emergency and uh, we should, let me look it up here. Let me read it to you, give me one second. I have a comment when we can do this is the flawed argument that we we have with taxation let's let's tax businesses and this is the same kind of argument there is no way that a landlord can have people in their property and not get rent from them and not be able to evict them they will not be able to maintain they will forfeit on those properties they will be they will just become trash Okay. This is ridiculous. There has to be some personal responsibility around here. And, and we're taking it all away and saying that you don't have to do anything on your own. You don't have to be responsible for anything. This is this is just crazy stuff. Can somebody okay. else? Let me let Ralph raise your hand. Go ahead. Push the button. Okay. First of all, indirectly or maybe directly, this is taking a property and constitutionally, they're not even able to do that because you're really, you're, you're taking your property when you're saying somebody can live there and not have to pay you. That's a taking of property. And that's one reason I'm a strong supporter of the Pacific Legal Group and other people that go after people that don't like to follow the constitution. 
I understand that. So again, a CIS strongly opposing this? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let me, and so number 13. Okay. Give me one second so I can move my cursor down. Oops, went too far. We're moving along very nicely, gentlemen. There we go. Okay, number 13. This is brought forward by the Lank Steering Committee. Every neighborhood council board member, officer, volunteer, and vendor is entitled to the full rights of due process. The city, okay. And the city of Los Angeles through its officials, agencies, and commissions done. The mayor and the city clerk, among others, shall expedite negotiations with committees appointed by and representing neighborhood council interests and concerns to determine what mandatory trainings are appropriate and necessary for board members and stakeholders and work to implement such an expedited, expedited manner. So that has to do with uh, the mandates uh, for neighborhood council members <laughs> that are in the works and coming forward. And uh, so Lank feels that uh, they put a pause right now and get into discussions before any more, more mandatory educational re-education programs be put into effect. First of all, before we go into like, stuff like that, I think the city council has to demonstrate their honesty, integrity, and et cetera, that they can follow the rules. I mean, why throw more rules on when they don't even follow their own rules? Pardon me for being so blunt. Well, there's a famous quotation out there. We could use it for, if it weren't for double standards, the city council would have no standards, okay. Uh, some are more equal than others. Well, uh, you have to live by uh, standards. They have their own. And uh, that's, I think that's why we've asked for an uh, investigation from the U.S. attorney to set up a grand jury because we are very, so we've addressed that issue of the double standards, I think, there. But uh, you're right. There's no argument there. Um, I guess they all failed their... Uh, their Brown examination. I, I, is it a, a Brown Act violation to meet three three members of the board meet in a meeting? And I don't discuss? think so. Is that they, a violation? They have a higher quorum. So, so and they I, have, and they I don't have believe- eight. They'd have to have uh, seven people in a meeting. Well, I don't believe that they are subject to the quorum of a quorum. Uh, we shouldn't be either, but I don't believe they are. So. They've got 15. I don't know either. I just uh, so you're right. Seven seven members can can carouse. Okay. So what's your feeling about this recommendation that Granada Hills? Really hard to say. Um, I I think it's too much when you. Well, I shouldn't say that because the, the odds are none of what we're asking for is going to come true. But let's assume that we get some of what we're talking about. Uh, going on beyond and doing this at the same time, we're, we're taking every government entity elected and throwing so it you, into the hopper so and saying, you can amend it. You can amend it. Would you want to amend it, remove something, change it? It's hard to say. I would, I think on this one, Sid, I would support Lank's position, um, not because I agree in total and not because I think it's going to accomplish anything, but just in case there's a chance, I would support it uh, so that it could go through if, if, if you get to that level. Okay. So the motion to support, I'll second that. Any discussion? Ralph, you have your hand up. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think this is more what I call, bluntly called, balderdash. I mean, 
All it says is really we should follow the Constitution. Well, following the Constitution is up to lawyers. I'm not a lawyer. A lot of people think they're following the Constitution when they're not. And, uh, you know. I've had constitutional law training by the federal government. Well, you may have had the training. I'm not a lawyer. And uh, I don't think you qualify as a lawyer either. You may take I, was a, I was assistant trial counsel and I did um, legal things at the federal level. I can't argue with that. You've had more experience than I have as the legal stuff. Yeah, but but look, let's be honest here, everybody. We are not qualified or allowed to give legal advice in any capacity. We can voice our opinions on laws, but we cannot give legal advice unless we are a, a board certified uh, legal legal entity. And I think we have to be true to that statement. So. I, I appreciate that you have a lot of experience in law, Ralph. I've got corporate law experience as well, but I'm not a lawyer, not certified to give advice, and I cannot give advice. So we have to be very careful how we address those kind of issues. You have to be careful how you say that. You can give somebody advice, but you don't want to get paid for it. No, you can't even give them advice, Ralph. You can give them your own opinion, what I would do, but you cannot give them advice in what to do. Okay. So any thoughts? I'm in favor of uh, moving forward on this. Uh, so am I. Scott and Ralph, uh, you're a no or you're in favor? I'm or... abstain. Okay. So three, four, one, still passes. Okay. Let's move on to the number 14. This is again, uh, the city council, I don't know what the city council is doing, okay? We have this homeless problem growing, growing, but they passed this resolution, making sure that we have vegetable products instead of meat products in the Los Angeles school district as a what? way of cut. I just, there's a state law about that and, and they voted to favor the state law where to uh, represent, uh, to have, you know, like uh, whatever they, those companies are, not meat or just whatever, to as a way of cutting down on uh, green greenhouse emissions. This they have time for, okay. Solving you know, what's going on in the city no problem, but they can pass a resolution. This is coming from the state, introduced by uh, Paul Koritz, and this is basically to have uh, make sure that LAUSD uh, has meals with uh, non-meat in it as a choice. That's part of our dictatorship. <laughs> I'm not going to have to worry about this. It's going to happen anyway because this, the state is going to make it impossible to get pork. You, you won't be able to have it in the next few years because they're passing laws about how pork is raised. And there's no place, no state that's going to follow California law. So uh, my feeling is I just would uh, put a CIS that we oppose the council yeah. recommend, recommendation. So. Okay. All in favor of this having a CIS to oppose this? I'm in favor. I don't believe in Soylent Green. Okay. Well, uh, for that, I mean, I, I don't like dictatorships. Okay. The next one has to do with uh, discussion of possible action regarding unarmed emergency room responses. Okay. And it has to do with uh, replacing and having a group of people who, and uh, I understand it's already going into effect that uh, they're gonna have a group of people who are not police to go to 911 calls. It'll be short lived. So it's already in effect. I think it's passed by the time we got to it. So. Yeah, but, but believe me, once once the people realize what's happening, it. it this will, this will be a major disaster. Okay, let's move on to number 15. Discussion of possible action regarding USPS trucks 
federal action. So they're recommending that uh, we support the uh, transfer of gas powered uh, postal delivery trucks to a, an all electric fleet here in the city of Los Angeles. And, and what do we have to say about that? That's a federal uh, government situation. But they they, they, the again, government. the city council has endorsed the, what the government's doing. They, <laughs> you know, we get that, I go through that list of legislative actions. This is one of the legislative actions that the city can. I think we should be commenting on the stupidity of all these things. That's you know exactly that. right. The, the, you know what the stupidity is here? The, the fact is, if the state or the city pass a law that says that all federal vehicles have to be electric, there is no law, federal or, or otherwise, that says that the mail must be delivered. And I, if I was the federal government, I'd say, come pick up your own mail, because but I'm not I, delivering. Let me interrupt. They're, they're commenting on a piece that's been put forward for, in the federal government to transform the fleet. So they're supporting that piece of legislation. Okay. You're saying the federal government is going to change over its vehicles to electric? Correct. Well, and they're supporting. Well, what do we have to say about it? I'm going to say we're opposing it. Okay. That's why. Yeah. If the mm -hmm. federal government wants to change to electric vehicles, let them. Yeah. What, is it? Against, what is I'm it? I'm against it. You want to say it's okay? How many I people? I, I would vote. Uh, so you, uh, Brian. Uh, Scott, uh, any comment on, on this? Well, I would, I would have, why you're against it. Why? It, because yeah. there's no power for these trucks. It's basically another where uh, just uh, the present, there's no, they have this it's fantasy dumb. that they're going to electrify all these cars and trucks, and there's not going to be any power to, to, to uh, power them. If the structure together to, to provide the power, what do we care? I, I mean, my point is. What do if we care? Infrastructure. If they're going to build the infrastructure that's going to be able to power all these cars, these buildings, these homes, and what 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 do we care? I mean, care because at, they're at, going to tax at, us to build these the infrastructure. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, they're never going to be able to get there. Let's be realistic. What they want to accomplish in the next ten years is not achievable. Well, I personally think that they should get some feedback that there are some people who don't agree with what they're doing. So, I mean, I don't look, I don't think we'll have a great impact, but as long as no one says anything, no one says boo, uh, then they're just going to push ahead. Not, you know, we need I a real, I mean, personally, I, I think it's our option. You want gas, drive gas, you want electric, that's that's what we have. We have that option now. We want to pay seven dollars a gallon to have a gas vehicle. Then so be it. I mean, you want electricity? Go get your electric car. I mean, it should be, you know. Well, uh, you may you may know that they've already passed a. I know. In Los Angeles, not to build any more gas stations. Right. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I do. So my worry is they're not going to have the infrastructure to power all these electric cars. Yeah, and you may be right. I don't know. I'm, it's, not, I'm, it's not stopping them. I've uh, protested many times. I've mentioned to them it's a delusion, and uh, they so they wanted to know what percent. I said I don't know. I'm not an expert. In but look, the the speculation is that there is going to be new revelations in the production of batteries and the, the rate in which they charge and the length in which they last. If that happens, many more people will go to a vehicle if the vehicle, the electric vehicle, can give them the same performance and that they have in a gas vehicle. That's just natural evolution. And as it happens, the people will fall in line with it. So- the electricity? We're we're trying to re-engineer something that that they they will fail miserably at, but eventually get to it anyway because that's the that's the future, all right. The future is not in gas and oil. The future is in electricity. That's just, that's just the way it is. Now we've already made mistakes along the way. We we set up the cleanest energy possible, and then we got rid of it all because we're afraid of it, which is nuclear. 
I so, agree. So, so the, I mean, this whole thing is is moot. You can say what you want, but it's going to happen. It's well, just like know, the, the horse went away because of the car. Way. You know, uh, the state of California paid uh, Pacific Gas and Electric a billion and a half dollars to keep the Abu Canyon open. Yeah. So, you know, but you, you heard that they recently have now greenlit uh, desalination. Okay. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. You know, I, there's nothing here that's, that's, uh, that's uh, anyway, so we can pass on this. And not I would, I, I okay. think it's not worth oh. talking about. Okay. We'll pass. Okay. The next, this uh, again was defeated. It uh, didn't pass uh, surprisingly in the in Sacramento, but it was a piece of legislation about restricting the ability to be have a concealed uh, gun permit, and there was all kinds. You would have to have a psychological evaluation to get a gun. And, uh, uh, you know, I have no problem with uh, having the the requirement to ensure that you are psychologically and physically capable of wielding a weapon. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, well, let me I let do me. have a problem with them arbitrarily deciding that concealed carry, uh, I don't want you to have it. And this feels to me like they're just trying to find a way to keep people from having weapons. If that's the case, that is unconstitutional as core. And good people across this country have stopped more, uh, more violence by having a concealed weapon uh, than anybody can can uh, believe. So, you know, th this is this is California. California does, is afraid of you having a weapon, but uh, as they decide to keep weapons out of your hands. They are not able to keep them out of the criminal's hands. There is nothing they can do to stop the criminal from having a weapon. Nothing. As I said, it was defeated. And as a psychiatrist, I don't know of any psychological test that it would be precise enough to identify someone who's psychologically capable of having a gun and not uh, having a gun. Well, I, and, and I, I will defer to you on that. And if that's the case, then then, uh, you know, you have to take your chances. But I do know this. If you try to eliminate weapons from law-abiding citizens, you will have more violence. There's no question about it. And people want to argue that all they want, but it's, it's an absolute fact. May I make a comment, sir? Please. The Supreme Court has already ruled that you can't force a criminal to say he has a weapon or not. So the only people that will have weapons eventually will be the criminals, as you said before. Um, you cannot legally uh, get them to say, oh, I have one and admit that. And well, let me interrupt for a sec. The reason I brought this forward again is to show what our city council is getting involved with. In. Okay. They, they supported this legislation, which was defeated. But our city council is giving their stamp of approval as if the city of Los Angeles is approving this, okay? And I would like to eventually do some pushback on their legislative action, showing that not everybody in the city approves of what they're doing. That's- uh, Well, we showed that when they, you know, what's happening about many of our councilmen. I mean, they're crooks. They, do, they lie, you know, they don't follow the rules. Yeah, but I, I just bring you forward because we now get this legislative report and I go through them and see what ones look a little silly that they have time to uh, get involved in, you know. Um, so again, I'm not a lawyer, but they support it, but it got defeated. And I'm sure someone in Sacramento will bring it forward again, but uh, Everyone would have to get a psychological test and it couldn't be more than $150 to get the test. That right off the bat is excluding people who are not so wealthy and whatever. So what can I say? But that's, that was defeated. Okay, next one got passed. And that's the discussion of possible actions, uh, medical payments. 
So uh, the state passed that. And when you go to a uh, see a doctor now, all the it has to be posted in his office uh, how much it's going to cost you and whatever, and uh, the cost and whatever it's going to have to be posted. And uh, to me, that's another unnecessary burden for a doctor to have all that. And the city council wanted to do it, and it's passed, so it's the law of the land now, so we can't do much about it. Yeah, but you know, on a practical side, I went to see a podiatrist. He didn't tell me how much his bill was going to be. I had no way of knowing what was going to happen. Turns out that for a 20 minute stay, no, no treatment of any kind, he charges $800. Oh my God. All right. That, that is absurd. There's no justification that I can come up with for that. And, uh, and so I, I think, you know, granted, I didn't have to pay $800. I only have a $132 bill. But the, the patient deserves to know what he's going to have to pay. And I think that all doctors should be just like any retail entity, post your prices, post your costs. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I think that's appropriate. All right. Well, let's have a law of the land. So it's there. Okay. And uh, we already discussed 12. It's tied together in 14. Okay. Who, so who we've come it, to the end. Who was it that was surprised at my comment? Was it Barbara or was it Ma <laughs> Madeline? I have a point of order. What's your point of order? Well, on every issue, Brian gets to be the first one to talk. Doesn't somebody else get to talk? Are you criticizing the chair? No, he's criticizing me. I think he's <laughs> criticizing me. No, there has to be something here because uh, there are times I put my raise my hand. So I don't, do you have your hand up all the time? I, I, I don't know what's going on here. Are Anyhow, you being excluded, Ralph? I apologize, Ralph. I didn't mean to I take your I apologize for not uh, having more control of the order of, of comment. I'll try to do better next time. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I, I see so many things going on here that we're discussing or voting on things that uh, we really have no business to be in of, other than say the government's out of control or we have a tutorial government, but, you know, it used to be government of the people, for the people, et cetera. Now we have government of the government, for the government, by the government. Pardon my sarcasm. They're telling us what vehicles we can buy. They're telling us where we can, everything else. That used to be something that we had a right to investigate and a right to decide, et cetera. And more and more of this is going by. I went to a doctor today. Uh, I have a rash and he said, well, he could uh, give me a, you know, prescribe something. I said, why, why don't you give me a, a prescription and if I want it, I can use it or I'll turn it up. He said, no, no, as of January 1, all prescriptions go from the doctor to the state and the state then uh, provides that to the uh counter of the uh, people that are gonna provide it. And I say, in other words, the we've lost the privacy between the doctor and the patient because now the state will know all the medicine you're going to get. What kind of insurance do you have, Ralph? What? What kind of insurance do you have? Still in the meeting. Is it PPO or is it HMO? Thank you. But the thing is... No, Ralph, did you say HMO? Because if you have an HMO, that's what HMOs are trying to get done. But that doesn't apply to PPOs. No, there's the doctor said it's a state law. For HMOs. He didn't say that. No. In all prescriptions go from him to the state and the state sends it to the uh, pharmacist. What is the state care, Ralph? I don't understand if you get an antibiotic. I mean, I could understand if it's a controlled substance. Well, I didn't hear that. 
Dr. Dr. Gold, have you heard of anything like that? You're muted. You're Sid. muted, Sid. Sorry. Yeah. No, the, the law passed that all prescriptions have to be electronic. Yes. Okay. Electronic, the simple prescription like a, your skin cream goes directly to the pharmacy. That, that I do understand. Okay. Prescriptions for scheduled drugs go through the state, but they go directly through the pharmacy too. So it's called the cure system, C-U-R-E-S. So anytime I write a prescription for a, a person with attention deficit and use an amphetamine medication, that goes to the state that I, it's watching what I'm doing, but it's watching, making sure I'm not over prescribing amphetamines. Because there used to be, if you could imagine, doctors who would over prescribe these medications and give it to patients. So the government has taken over, but the, all the other prescriptions are to be electronic. They're not going to the state. So, I, so the rash uh, would not, it should go directly to the pharmacy. I know the system. When you write a prescription, you look for a pharmacy, they get you all the pharmacies in the country. If I wanted to write a prescription in Massachusetts, I could do it because Massachusetts, for whatever reasons, will accept my. So it's not going to the state unless it was a scheduled medication. And that goes to the cure system. And that is being kept track of. But they're watching me, supposedly. They're not watching other people, but uh, who knows? Okay. Well, I'm glad to tell you that because it, it bothers me that these yeah, well, uh, all the prescriptions are now electronic. And you know, when things are electronic, you don't know what's going to happen. It's the same with dentists as, as well. Excuse me, Barbara, repeat it's that. The same with dentists as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're all electronic. You can't practice without a computer now. Sid, yeah. Sid what happens if the, uh, if the doctor or dentist or whoever uh, provides the drugs at his facility? Uh, He's not supposed to, unless he has a pharmacy license, okay? And he, he would still, he would have to have a license that he could dispense drugs. And that how would about, also- uh, How about veterinaries? No, I'm, not, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Probably not, probably not. What happens when the doctor has samples? Can't he give those out? They're different. It's a different issue. Samples are not supposed to be used to lower the costs. It's only supposed to be used to get you used to the medication. Most doctors use it uh, in a way that they're not <laughs> supposed to. That's, that's right. the cost. That yeah. is absolutely true. Okay. But that's the that's when the government allow. But now if you give out samples, you have to have a very co close record of a log of how you've done it. They can come in and audit you to see how you've managed the samples. Okay. Mm. Anything a one of the it's impossible, I think, now for anybody to be in a private practice. I, I, I think we're looking at uh, in the future some very large lawsuits. Well, maybe. Anyway, we got through the agenda, it's very good. I appreciate it. Uh, committee announcements. I want to let you know what I've done for the committee today. Today's my birthday. So, um, happy well, birthday. This happy is how birthday, I'm celebrating Fred. my birthday, being in being political. You know, so anyway, um, but anyways, I, I enjoyed the meeting, like the participation. Ralph, I'll try to do better. Thank you, Barbara. Any comments that you want to make? Are you going to the, the uh, fair this weekend? Oh, yes. Barbara, you want to be on the committee? I'm on the VCC. Tent. Yeah. Barbara, you want to be on this committee? <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, okay. Barbara, I I have uh, I drove down Gerald and that property is for sale. Yes. You didn't tell anybody. Oh, I did. Okay. It was on the news. <laughs> it was on uh, it was actually on the news when the sign went up. Oh, okay. $875,000. What property are we speaking of? The Hoarder House. What house? 
the trash house on Gerald. So, so Barbara, I think you should get a psychological exam on the person buying the house before you, <laughs> you let them purchase it. Well, Sid, I would like to say happy birthday. Thank you. To Barbara Malin. Barbara, it's nice to hear your voice. You too, sweetie. Thank you, honey. And Maddie, you have any comments? No, just wanted to um, hear um, the discussion. And um, I do agree um, on everything practically that was said. Um, uh, I think uh, City of LA Council is becoming a rubber stamp. Uh, they're just following suit to move the agenda along. Um, and they're moving too fast. I think that City Council is holding three meetings a week. And yet we as a neighborhood councils get to meet once a month, unless we have special meetings and which in time we really don't, can't even move fast enough to submit CISs. I think they need to slow their roles and allow us as stakeholders, as neighborhood councils to be able to participate in some of these decisions and they're taking our voices away. So uh, maybe some neighborhood councils can join and, and uh, share our views about that, that they should not just arbitrarily you know, decide and vote. Uh, a lot of times I think things should, should be put on ballots where 4 million people should voice their um, voices. Um, if this is democracy, I think that's how it needs to happen. Not arbitrarily that it's from top down. Um, it just, I don't think it's the right way to move forward. And I think, yeah, there's a lot of push to um, push people, uh, especially landlords out of their homes, especially the mom and pops. They're not going after the big developers. They're going after small landlords. Um, and this is really impacting them where they're forced to let go of their properties because they're behind on their mortgages and taxes and whatnot. It's a plan, it's an agenda, and that needs to stop. It is, you know, it's not, the taxpayers or the landlords or whatnot um, place, in my opinion, to fork the, the money to keep people in, in homes. This is their, I think, uh, investment and they purchased it as an investment to pay their own bills. If the city is concerned about, um, you know, a certain population, um, they have the funds, we're paying taxes. We've uh, voted for HHHH and uh, they've just, returned $150 million back to the federal government. They could have put that money to good use, you know, build housing and house um, a lot of the individuals that they're worried about that are gonna end up, you know, on the streets for, for, for that matter. I don't know how they're thinking, what they're thinking, but um, I just think it's partly laziness that they can't come up with uh, ways to manage. And, um, and now they're just falling back on other people to you know, carry the weight. And that is unethical in my opinion. I, have to say, I, I agree with you. And uh, it's sad that we have to feel this way. Oh, well, it is. I mean, I mean, with, you know, and I think it's just coming way, way, like from, from our governor, like he spits the tone and everybody under him because this is, you know, Democrat state and, um, you know, and everybody wants to follow suit because they all have their ambitions and they want to climb that ladder and, you know, um, but at what cost, at what cost, you know, as uh, Brian had mentioned over 350 actually thousand people flee the state and, um, you know, they've uprooted themselves and, and families have been torn apart and uh, it's, it's disgraceful. You know, why are we here as, as so many things you guys uh, talked about that I'm, you know, wholeheartedly um, I'm in agreement um, on, on <laughs> most of the issues that you guys brought up. And it's very unfortunate that some things passed so quickly that we could not even, you know, voice our concerns. Why are they moving so fast? That's the question. Why? What's the urgency? Good points. Good. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for allowing me to join. Anytime. It's open. We try to be transparent. Okay. Of course. Okay, I'm going to take away my share screen. 
so I can close the meeting. Okay. All right. Any other comments? A motion to adjourn? No second yeah. that. <laughs> okay. So the mean, let me turn off the sound here. Have a good and evening. Seven. Good evening. I'm turning off the recording now at 8.39. Okay. Thank you all. I, we got through a, a heavy agenda. Good discussions. And not a total agreement, but I, it's good to hear all sides. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, that's good night what it's all, all about. Uh, you know, sharing opinions and respecting each other for it. And, you know, we've, we've done that and we continue to do that. And that makes us a little bit better because we learn. Can we get something also um, accomplished? Maybe uh, I know city council is meeting now virtually where, because, you know, they don't want to have in-person meetings because of all the contention that they're hearing. Uh, we do need to ask them to stop meeting. I think something CIS is that every neighborhood council can put forth. And also maybe we can ask that, you know, it's like I was searching today. I wanted to join the meeting. I couldn't find the phone number to call it in and all these, uh, you know, um, warriors are out there voicing their concerns about certain things that in this meeting that we felt that it was, we were, you guys were opposing, I should say, but our voice is not, is not being heard at that council meetings. And uh, those phone numbers we need to have readily available so that most of us could also call in and share our um, voices. Because justice warriors are the only ones at the city council, you know, speaking up. 